it appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Cool TV's Primetime News. I'm Nifemi Oguntoye. In our major story, President Goodluck Jonathan finally declares interest in the 2015 presidential election sets to peak PDP nomination farm in November. Also in this program, Nigeria Gabna's forum kicks against autonomy for local government and constitution amendment. And temper flares as residents of the Sherry North in Ogun State take one of Nigeria's leading logistics companies to task of a bad mood. Outside Nigeria now, WHO sets up international team of scientists to determine the effectiveness of using the blood of Ebola survivors as a treatment. We'll begin tonight with politics as President Goodluck Jonathan said on Thursday that he has decided to run for re-election in February. Jonathan met with top officials from the ruling People's Democratic Party and thanked them for the unanimous endorsement as the party's presidential candidate. The president told them he has accepted the offer and assured them that he would pick the nomination firm before the deadline expired next week. Jonathan's former re-election announcement will be made at a public event between November 7 and November 15, according to our presidential aide. The news was widely expected, especially after the PDP state governors gave Jonathan their backing in September. The PDP has an unwritten rule that calls for rotational power aimed at appeasing voters across the religiously divided country. A religious group that joined the Muslim Forum has dismissed the recent court ruling which upheld the position of the Lagos state government on the ban of hijab in public schools. The group, in addition, has threatened to boycott the 2015 general elections if the ruling stays. Anita Fatundi was at the media briefing by the group and filed in the support. The Joint Muslim Forum expressed displeasure over the ruling, describing it as illogical, inexplicable, and a miscarriage of justice. What the Muslims are demanding in the issue of hijab is they are not giving fundamental human rights. They are not asking anyone to put hijab on Christian peoples. They want to dress the way the Quran commands them. Freedom of religion is one of the civil liberties enjoyed in a civil society. Lagos should not deny this religious right. In what appears as obvious threat, the group says its members will use what they have to get what they want. Election fever has grieved politicians as we draw near February 2015. We have resolved to give our vote to any candidate from any political party who is ready to grant us religious freedom. We will vote for those who will approve the use of hijab in schools, no matter what their political affiliations are. This suffering is too much. Lagos State Government treats Muslims with disdain. Enough is enough. Our slogan for 2015 is therefore, no hijab, no votes. Even at the national level, 
Muslims don't have a president they can trust, a president who can assure them that there will be justice. Justice will be done. This president promised justice. He never went to justice. There's no justice in Asura. Just as today, there is no justice in al -Azhar. The group urged the Lagos government to promote religious harmony in the state. Hijab must be allowed in schools and workplaces, including hospitals. Morning assembly prayers in school must be standardized and not left to the winds and caprices of the head teacher or principal. Arabic and religious and Islamic religious knowledge teachers must be employed to teach, to teach the subjects in schools. Muslim science students should not be prevented from taking Islamic studies. Israel holiday was be declared just like it's done in Oshun State. Corona law must be amended to allow Muslims to claim their corpses for burial without delay. Members of the group, however, dispel the notion that they are hell-bent on pursuing a political agenda. Anita Fatunji, Core TV News, Lagos. Reactions have continued to trail the recent violent crisis that rocked the Oshun State APC over its delegates' Congress in Oshogbo. The state governor, Raoul Farebeshola, has described calls by the opposition PDP for a commission of inquiry on the issue as baseless, adding that the development has not affected the unity and oneness in the party in any negative form. I'm not aware of any discord. Things are going normally. I think it's in their imagination. The discord they perhaps are commenting on must be a figment of their imagination. The party in Oshun is calm and is conducting its affair as democratically possible as we can have it. So I don't see any problem at all with what you are doing in Oshun. Well, the brick bats between the governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, and his predecessor, Kayode Fayobi, has continued unchecked as the two remain at each other's neck. The board of contention this time is the multi-millionaire new government house completed and commissioned at the tail end of the Fayemi administration. Rashid Rashid reports that the war of words between the two is not about to end soon. Fayoshe's team at an earlier inspection of the new government house reveals their findings on the cost of the villa to the public. Out of this one luxury provided with 3.3 with billion borrowed fund, market borrowed fund, for Fayemi and his wife, and his wife and children, and we now wait for the state and his people. But are there more that meet the eyes? Before now, the past governor had intention of buying an helicopter. That is why an helipad was put on Okayoba. So that anytime he, he comes to he comes to Ado, he just flies straight to that place. The idea was to separate himself from all of us completely. He does not want to see us. We are not important. To him. Unfortunately, the people of this state refuse to let him have his way. So, what will the Fayoshi administration do with the new government house? There are plans to see how, how, the, how, how that place can be put into better use. We'll see how, how but it, is, it is almost certain that there's nothing anybody can do about that place. And that is why we also want to, want to let the public know that why must we put the state into this kind of situation, this kind of, put the state into depth just to build, just to put this kind of facility. The man in the eye of the storm, Coyote Fayemi, would however not let sleep the opportunity to defend his action. What dare to react to such frivolous allegations? It's a joke. The guy is an alawada and I think Nigerians really need to as for a psychiatric test for anyone who is going into such an esteem of Observers believe that a popular saying that it is the grass that suffers when two elephants fight captures the raging issue even as Ikiti citizens wait to see the implication for their well-being. Rashid Rashid.
or TV News. Adoikiti. The Nigeria Governor's Forum, led by the Plateau State Governor, Jonah Jang, has rejected the position of the National Assembly on autonomy for local governments. It also hinted that the State House of Assemblies would reject the amendment to the Constitution by the time it's sent to them. The Forum said in a statement that state lawmakers would be mobilized to vote against the provision which is designed to provide independent funding for the councils as well as insulate them from undue and interference uh, undue interference from state governments the governors also accused some unnamed members of the national assembly for using the conference uh, committee to force through an amendment that was rejected by the senate during the constitution amendment debate the Senate, however, has passed a bill designed to curb cyber crimes and all the computer-related frauds. The bill, which was sponsored by Adebinga Kaka, was passed after the Senate considered a report of the Joint Committee on Judiciary and Financial Crimes. Deputy Senate President Ike Kweramado presided over the passage of a bill that also provides a legal framework for dealing with cyber crimes and computer related frauds. We have no computers nor the internet, so they do not take care of the crimes which we are examining today. So, taking the opportunity of this day to fill this gap so that be able to criminalize some of the actions that are taking place in the crime and the cyber world. Our country is being, uh, as we say, being seen as um, a cyber crime nation. But with this action of taking today, our friends and the international community, we see that we are serious to remove uh, this perception uh, um, against our country and believe that the good of those who seek to destroy our collective integrity will eventually uh, will now uh, be taken care of. And our country will uh, be seen as, for what it is, a country that is serious to stop out cyber crime. President Goodluck Jonathan dismisses human rights abuse against Nigeria security forces. Find out more after this timeout. Don't go away. As a doctor, I've seen lots of mothers. Now, I'm one myself. Other mothers have taught me things only a mother could know. But when it came to relieving their baby's pain and fever, many mothers don't know what to do. So I told them about Panadol Children. Panadol Children is fast and effective, and it can be taken from when they're three months old. I'm still learning to be a mother, and it's getting better every day. New Panadol Children, fast and effective relief from pain and fever. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes, and bleeding from the eyes, ears, and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces, or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees, or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. You're on to Cool TV's primetime news. If you just joined us, here's a quick reminder of some of our major headlines. President Goodluck Jonathan finally declares interest in the 2015 presidential election, sets to peak PDP nomination fund in November. Nigeria Governor's Forum kicks against autonomy for local governments in Constitution Amendment. Uh, 
Temple Flats as residents of the Sherry North in which they take one of Nigeria's leading logistics companies to task the back. For more on the news, you can also reach us on our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash cool TV news. And our Twitter handle at cool TV news NG. You can watch our news and other programs on YouTube now. It's trending on youtube.com forward slash cool TV. Live a space and news. Moving on now, President Goodluck Jonathan says most of the allegations of human rights abuse leveled against Nigeria's security forces were exaggerated. He also told participants at an international workshop on civil military cooperation in internal security operations in Abuja that efforts are on to review the use of military fatigue. President Jonathan pledged that any suspected case of abuse would be thoroughly investigated, but wants the human rights community to show more understanding. It's a gathering of security operatives across the world on the need for effective civil military cooperation during internal security operations. The three-day workshop is in line with the soft approach the Nigerian government says it is adopting in its counter-insurgency operation. But President Jonathan also used the opportunity to speak for the first time on allegations of human rights abuse leveled against troops at the front line. I'm not saying there are no issues, there are issues, we are dealing with the issues, but the soldiers themselves need to be protected. They also need, they are also humans, they also have rights. And sometimes people for some mysterious reasons intend to blackmail government and blackmail the, 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 the security services. He appears convinced that Nigerian soldiers could not have carried out some of the abuses attributed to them and voiced his concerns about manipulation. The use of the military camouflage, and that is why we are even trying to see how we will, I know we, we discussed that we must review use of military camouflage and fatigue dresses by military and paramilitary agencies. And people were supposed not to use them and using them. And so the, 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 the interest in society is so complex now for very reasons sometimes we don't even know. And with the social media and the power of manipulation using the uh, computer, it's so powerful that there's a lot of deception going on. For his part, the National Security Advisor Sambo Dasuki explained that the workshop is a confidence-building measure in line with government's approach to ongoing operations. We have been making concerted efforts to correct the current impression that our security forces are involved in widespread acts of human rights abuse, which is also condoned by government. We will all recall that we recently hosted an international conference on the observance of human rights, which was attended by the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Hatu Ben Suda, and other international human rights luminaries. That event reinforced our commitment to attaining zero tolerance for human rights abuses for our security forces. Also speaking at the event, former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar expressed a need for the authorities to take human rights issues seriously. It is pertinent to note that the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies take the issue of human rights seriously. Hence, the training curricula in all our military training establishment, both at the basic, intermediate, or strategic level, strategic level training, include a component on human rights. The Nigerian authorities say they are keen on ensuring that civil military cooperation in theater of operation are cordial, in line with international best practices. Meanwhile, the European Union has commended the soft approach the Nigerian authorities have adopted in addressing insurgency in the northeast of the country. EU head of delegation Michelle Arian said these at the opening of the three-day international workshop on civil military cooperation in Abuja. Civil military cooperation can offer a relevant framework for the promotion of human rights when armed forces are interacting with local populations. The human rights component of the project funded by the European Union, which aims to improve such interaction, 
is also relevant for the operations against terror terrorism and insurgency in populated areas in Nigeria. For this reason, the main security agencies, the three armed forces, the police force, and the Department of State Security are involved in its implementation. It is important to say that this project, proposing a complementary approach to the traditional conduct of counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations, is one among the very few projects of this nature being implemented in Africa. I wish to congratulate the Nigerian authorities and armed forces for being part of this remarkable development. We are delighted to see the direct and dedicated involvement of so many Nigerian offices in the project at national level. This three-day workshop offers the great opportunity to engage with a number of European and international experts and to exchange experience from other civil military operations in a complex environment and counter-terrorism operations in other African countries as well as in the Middle East. The news of a ceasefire resulting from the widely reported negotiation with the Boko Haram sect has been received with mixed feelings. Reports of attacks on some villages in Adamawa and Borneo states have continued in spite of the ceasefire deal. A public affairs analyst, Edgar Amos, says the recent abduction of about 100 girls by the insurgents has dashed the hope of many in Adamawa state. Question to ask is, why would this attack still continue? There are a number of explanations. I've read recently where Danladi Amadou had said that those who are carrying out these attacks are actually not representing Boko Haram, are perhaps just criminals. There are also reports that perhaps the negotiation for the ceasefire was sealed with factions of the Boko Haram insurgents themselves. And it is also speculated that perhaps the news about the ceasefire had not gone down to the field commanders yet given the fact that they were operating in different parts of the country so what is clear and i'm inclined to believe it is that some negotiation had taken place but the fact that there were still attacks after the ceasefire meant that maybe a section of the insurgents were not carried along in the ceasefire agreement so perhaps that might have explained why these things have still continued what is obviously clear is that we can do with some good news. This insurgency has gone on for too long and that perhaps it is time the insurgency is stopped. Member of the National Assembly, Anthony Madwait, however, says the military should be applauded for courageously taking on the insurgents. They are doing the best they can. And I know in no distant time, if all the equipment we are expecting come into the country, we will be better for it. But for now, please permit me to commend the military on what they are doing. Away from there to Kano State, where the state government has donated 17 truckloads of assorted food items and 6,000 blankets to people displaced by insurgents in Bornu and Yobe states. The relief items are to be taken to camps within the country and the ones in the J Republic where the refugees fled to. Speaking shortly before dispatching the donation, Governor Rabiu Conquazo explained that seven trucks loaded with 3,000 bags of maize and 1,200 bags of rice will be taken to refugees in the Niger Republic, while those in camps in Bornu and Yobe would benefit from the contents of five trucks each. He also urged government officials from the two states, as well as those of the Niger Republic's consulate, to ensure that the items reach the beneficiaries on time. And that is why the state government decided to send some food items and some blankets. We have now purchased 2,000 blankets for our people in the general public. 2,000 maybe 2,000 in the world. 
Recently, we brought to you a report on the deplorable state of road in the Sherry North in Ogun State. Badly affected as the Riverview Estate, whose residents have continuously clamored for government's attention and partnership to rehabilitate the road. The residents have gone further this time to vent their anger on a popular logistic company whose operations they claimed have contributed more to the worsening road situation in the area. Kazim Kasali's report is presented from our studios. <laughs> This is a scene that greeted Court TV New School as the residents of Riverville Estate resolved to take up the issue of the bad roads leading into and fro within the estate with those corporate organizations states they want to take them for a ride. It is come and repair the road that look at the trucks they are using. Each of those trucks is equivalent to about five to six seven of the cars that are being used here. And yet DHL, in their arrogance, will not listen to anybody, they will not talk to anybody, they will write letters, they will not show up, they will not give any reply. I mean, as far as they are concerned, it is the rantings of ants in this place, and we are no longer going to allow it. Why the argument and the proprietary of the blockade by residents of the estate was on, they have had enough of what he described as the arrogance and conceitedness of the corporate organizations who don't even acknowledge them when they write letters to them on the way forward. He says the organization, in this case DHL, has done enough damage to the road and should join in effort to make it possible. Individuals will do part of it. Corporate organizations will also lend their hands. That is how to coexist. We cannot say it is going to be a state government alone that is going to do it. No, they may have their fault, all right? But DHL is the main culprit. I still want to say that without any fear of contradiction. On the legality or otherwise of the move by residents of the estate to blockade the road, making it impossible for those they believe are taking them for a ride, George Akiola has this to say. It's not illegal. It's not illegal because, you see, this road was broken in four places by the massive flood of 2010 2011. We repair the roads. The citizens have their own powers. And what we are doing now is we are picketing DHL. And this road that we repair, that the government is not um, giving us attention on, we repair the roads. We keep the roads in a state of um, constant repair. So if any organization is messing it up and they are refusing to cooperate, we exercise that right to call them to order. Though this man, obviously an agent of the company, disagrees with the notion that his organization is not socially responsible. Court TV News crew, however, saw a delegation of the company come back for a discussion on the way forward with the residents, giving preconditions which they say must be adhered to before the blockade or a state permit picketing will stop. We'll take another break and return with business, sports, and other news outside Nigeria. Don't go away. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV. Leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station.
And now to business. The National Economy Council has resolved that the central bank should provide seed funding of 100 billion naira to assist states establish mini cattle ranches across the country. This is meant to address incessant bloody clashes between farmers and headsmen across uh, in some parts of the country. Benue State Governor Gabriel Suzuan described, uh, disclosed this to State House correspondents at the end of a meeting presided over by the Vice President, Namad Sambo. The Debt Management Office says on Thursday that Nigeria has auctioned the sum of 171.26 billion naira, that's about $1.03 billion worth of Treasury bills, with maturities uh, ranging between three months and one year this week with mixed yields. The debt office says 59.88 uh, naira billion naira worth of three-month paper was sold at 9.80 percent, 15 basis points lower than the previous auction on September 4, 24. A total of 45 billion naira have auctioned in six-month bills at 10.20 percent against 10.10 percent of the last auction while 66.38 billion naira worth was sold in one-year notes at 11.25% compared with 10.35% previously. Now a total of 201.92 billion naira was subscribed against 181.14 billion naira at the last auction. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is seeking the assistance of the traditional institutions in boosting effective tax collection and the culture of taxation, uh, tax payments rather. Regional Coordinator of FIRS Southwest, Olushegun Okpanike, uh, who led a steam at a court sea visit to the Palace of Oba Victor Olateru Olagbegi and the Achievers University in Owo, local government area of Ondo State, says the visit is to create awareness and solicit the support of the good people of Owo Kingdom on general tax administration. According to him, tax payment is compulsory in compliance with tax laws, while effective tax collection will improve the revenue of the Federation. Obaolatero Lagbegi assured of a support towards prompt tax payment. He, however, enjoined the organization to employ more hands to be able to cover more grounds in the entire six local government areas under its jurisdiction. Equity transaction on the Nigerian Stock Exchange on Thursday ended on a negative note. The NSE All Share Index dipped by minus 0.04 percent to close at 39,998.72 basis points. Market capitalization decreased and closes in the same manner at 12.91 trillion naira. In all, a total of 304.3 million shares valued at 3.102 billion naira were exchanged in 4,693 deals. Report shows that Nestle topped the Guinness chart, followed by Footy Oil, Cap Insurance, Bobbill, and Nigeria Breweries. On the other hand, Guinness topped the Losers charts, followed by Presco, EcoBank, Trans International, NCR, and PZ. Meanwhile, here are the top five. Trades. On sports now, a high court sitting in Jaws has nullified the Nigeria Football Federation elections that brought Amaju Pinik in as president in the ruling which might attract a global ban from all football activities on Nigeria by World Football Governing Body FIFA. The court termed the NFF gathering in Worry as illegal. It insists the status quo should be maintained by reinstating Chris Giwa as president of the NFF. Giwa was elected president of the Nigeria Football Federation in an election that failed to get the blessings of neither FIFA nor CAF. It's a popular notice that Giwa's camp claimed to have secured a court injunction stopping the NFF General Assembly from taking place in Wari. Nigeria's senior national team has dropped five places to 42nd in the latest FIFA World Ranking released on Thursday. The African champions were adjudged the 38th best football playing team in the world, according to the ranking released earlier in September. The Eagles are now the ninth uh, ranked African side 
behind Algeria, Côte d'Ivoire, Tunisia, Ghana, Cameroon, Cape Verde, Egypt and Senegal following their poor run in the 2015 African Cup of Nations qualifiers earlier this month. The drop comes after losing 1-0 to Sudan and Khartoum after playing out a 0-0 draw in South Africa. Meanwhile, Algeria remained at the summit of African football with 989 points, which put them at the 15th position in the world, while Cote d'Ivoire second in Africa and ranked 25th in the world. And now to Champions League, Liverpool striker Mario Balotelli faces a reprimand uh, from manager Brendan Rodgers after swapping shirts with Real Madrid's Pepe at halftime in a 3-0 Champions League defeat at Anfield. Balotelli made the exchange as his side treated Real by three goals and the striker was substituted at the break. Rodgers, who was infuriated when defender Mamadou Sako did the same with Samuel Eto'o at Chelsea's last season, added that he had an incident last year with a player that was something, and that was something he dealt with internally. It completed another miserable night for Balotelli, who disappointed in the 3-2 win against QPR in the Premier League at the weekend. Two Everton fans suffered minor facial injuries after about 50 Lily supporters armed with meta chairs attacked them in a city centre bar. The clubs face each other in the Europa League group state match in the northern French city on Thursday. Everton fan Andrew Brutton, who was at the bar with his family, said his father was punched and hit by a chair. Messerside police said the fans had been discharged from a local hospital at Messerside police officers are in Lille to assist the policing of the game. To tennis now, Cyrilla Williams clinched the year-end world number one ranking for the fourth time when Maria Sharapova, the only woman with any chance of overtaking her, lost for a second time at the WTA finals. Sharapova only had a slim mathematical chance of leapfrogging Williams for the top sport and needed a strong showing at the WTA finals. But the Russian's chances of finishing number one for the fourth time in her career ended when she was beaten 6-3, 6-2 by Wimbledon champion Petra Vitova at Singapore's indoor stadium. Sharapova also lost her opening match since Caroline Wozniakski and although she cannot reach the number one rank in sport, she still has a chance of qualifying for the semi-finals if she wins a last group match against Agnieszka Radwanska and Wozniaka uh, beats Kivitova. Now, Williams also finished the year number one in the world in 2002, 2009 and last year. An international team of scientists has been set up to determine the effectiveness of using the blood of Ebola survivors uh, as a treatment. It's hoped the antibodies used by the immune system to fight Ebola can be transferred from a survivor to a patient. The study will start in Guinea and is led by the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Antwerp, Belgium. The European Union has given 2.9 billion euros to fund the project. There are no widely available proven drugs or vaccines for Ebola. The World Health Organization has backed the use of survivors' blood as the worst outbreak of Ebola in history continues to get worse. And just before we close the show, here's a wrap-up of stories that made our headlines. We told you that President Goodluck Jonathan has finally declared interest in the 2015 presidential election. Also brought you a report that Nigeria Governors Forum has kicked against autonomy for local governments in constitutional amendment. And finally, Temple fled as residents of a sherry north in local state took one of Nigeria's leading logistics companies task of a battle.
And that's been the show tonight. On behalf of our entire news crew, I am Nifemi Ogunto Ye, wishing you a wonderful night rest. <laughs>